All right, I got the new CPUs for my server. These are actually, I think, one of the fastest, if not the fastest chips that this particular board supports. These are Xeon chips uh, running at 3.2 gigahertz, 512K of L2 cache, and 2 megs of L3 cache. The Intel part number is SL7AE. And I'm working on removing the old ones. I forgot what a pain the heatsink clips are on these socket 604 motherboards. You've got to be really careful and use a. They're meant to use a screwdriver to remove, and it's risky because you can end up stabbing the motherboard. But I've got one removed, and the other one I've just got the fan taken off. I've still got to get the heatsink off, so let me take care of that real quick. All right, I got the new ones in their sockets. All ready for some Arctic Silver 5, and then I can reinstall the heatsinks. This here is one of the old CPUs. It's an SL6VL. This was just an older 2.4 GHz chip with a 512K of L2 cache and no L3, so this would be a nice performance upgrade. A file server really doesn't take advantage of a big CPU once you get past a certain point. But I figured while I got this thing apart, I might as well upgrade it, max it right out, and uh, it'll be ready for something a little bigger. Like if someday if I decide to experiment with OpenFiler or another OS that needs a little more CPU power, uh, it'll be ready for it. Unfortunately, OpenFiler is dropping their 32-bit support, so... The newest I can go is version 2.3. Kind of bums me out. But there's other things out there too that I might want to do with this machine if I ever, um, you know, repurpose it. You never know. I also made a couple mistakes in my previous video, especially about the model of the motherboard. This is a SE7501HG2. Um, the other one I think I said was a BR2, that was wrong. The BR2 only has four RAM slots. This one actually has six, and it supports up to 12 gigs of RAM, which I think is kind of crazy for a 32-bit system. It must use some form of memory paging or something. Uh, you can probably tell I've got one of the RAID controllers moved because it was, was actually in my way while I was trying to work. stock Xeon heat sink. It's just a heavy metal base with some copper fins. So let me get these doggone things reinstalled and see if I can do it without breaking the retention clips. Man I hate those clips. What a nightmare that was. It really wouldn't be that hard if the case wasn't so confined on the front edge of the CPUs but I'll tell you what getting those clips back on there is not fun compared to what I'm used to on more modern uh, computers. Here's a look at one of the CPU fans. Not that I can get a very good picture though, it's got one of those holographic Intel labels on it. It's uh, 240 milliamps at 12 volts, uh, made by Sanyo Denki. Certainly nothing wrong with these fans. They've been running since they were new. And you get an idea how old this system really is. This is the factory CD-ROM drive. It was made in March of 2004. I think one thing that was fairly easy on these particular mounting setups was changing the cooling fan. Basically just uh, snaps into place. Got the second one here. Hard to do this with one hand though. Let's see. Just gotta get inside those two plastic clips and push it straight down and you're good to go. Just gotta hook up the uh, connectors. Now let me put my RAID controller back in and we'll give this thing a power up test. 
All right, time for the power-up test. According to the documentation on Intel's website, I already have the minimal BIOS that's needed to support these chips. It's outdated by several versions, but it's kind of a pain to update it, and I don't have the floppy drive at the moment. Uh, I may or may not try to do that later. I haven't decided yet. If it works, it works. I'm probably going to leave it alone. But here we go. Now this board does take a while before anything comes on the screen, so I just gotta wait a bit here. Oh, the keyboard blinked, that's a good sign. Sweet. Looks like it's going to work. Well, that sucked. I locked the system up. <clears throat> the stuck on plug here was uh, sitting right on top of one of the jumper or the. Uh, you know, little jumper blocks down there with the prongs sticking up. The stupid thing just happened to be sitting right on there. So I know on my luck it just toasted something. I'm going to try rebooting it. Release that button. I swear I have the worst luck with uh, things being where they shouldn't be when I'm trying to work on this with the power on. I just hope it didn't damage anything. It's quite a spark. I won't really know until uh, I check every little feature on the motherboard, but I'm not about to do that. Okay, good. It is booting back up. Mm. I wonder if this board even supports the 2 meg of, of L3 cache because it didn't even show it on there. Whatever. I finally got the RAM. I've been running on the new processors for several days and haven't had any trouble. Uh, it just took forever for the RAM to get here. You can see how much shorter they are than the existing two chips that are in there. But this is, each one of these chips is uh, one gig, so there's four gigs total. And uh, it's a different chip arrangement on those other ones, so hopefully the board's not going to complain about a bank mismatch and, or anything stupid like that. I just want to get this thing done. It's been on my workbench for way too long. So if the RAM works, all that's left to do now is to get a better cooling fan for that end, uh, that last fan there on the end. So let's see what happens. Where's that power switch? Work, damn it. Oh, let's see here. It's probably going to take even longer to post than it usually does now. See if I can pause the BIOS screen so I can read it better if I need to. Alright, I got screen at least. Cool. 400, no degraded arrays, everything's working. I'm going to let this thing boot up and uh, run it for a while, make sure everything's in good, good working order. Alright, I'm up and running. You can see the OS maxed out at 3.8 gigs of RAM, which is about typical for a 32-bit architecture. 
32-bit uh, stuff can address 4 gigs of RAM, but usually you don't get all of it available to the operating system because of shared resources. So 3.8 gigs, plenty. What that'll do for the file server is it allows more buffers to be created and improve the throughput from the uh, hard drives, and especially if there's a repeatedly accessed file things like that it can actually just go to and from the RAM instead of you know, completely using the hard drive and it frees up the hard drive for another file to be accessed and it actually fills the RAM completely up after the server's been on for a while in fact I wonder if I refresh this page if it'll uh, say more than 46 megs is used I think I have to read a bunch of files for it to uh, start filling buffers yeah, still says 46 megs. The performance of the CPU went up quite a bit when I put this uh, 3.2 gig in there. The Bogo MIPS, whatever that means, I know it's something million instructions per second. Um, that was like for like 4100 something around there, if I remember right. So it's it's gained quite a bit of uh, performance. I think I need to update the BIOS on the motherboard though because it says 512k cache which is correct for the L2 but I'm not sure if the motherboard is using the L3 cache that's on the CPU which is 2 megs either the OS isn't isn't showing it or the motherboard's not taking advantage of it because the BIOS is quite a few versions behind what it should be and I'm not sure I really want to bother upgrading it right away I just want to uh, get this thing done and be able to use it so, I'm calling this project good. <laughs>